Alright, there we go. We are back for science. Hi, Avery. Awesome. We got Timmy, John, Sam. Alright, all sorts of friends joining us. Very exciting to have you guys here uh, for science. We are going to have an awesome science class today. Uh, most of you know me. Again, I am Spike. Um, and we are going to be talking about uh, invertebrate diversity today. So that is going to be an exciting ride. I'm very excited. I have loads to tell you about invertebrate diversity. I know you guys earlier in the year, uh, you guys did a little bit on vertebrates and invertebrates. Um, and so we are going to be continuing. Hi, Timmy. We're going to be continuing with that uh, today. So I'm very excited um, that you guys are here joining me. And I am uh, just going to jump right in. So, like I said, science, as you know, we're doing biology. I am a spike, and today we're doing invertebrate diversity. And we are just going to jump right in. So, um, have we learned about the like seven layer classification system uh, that uh, animals um, or that scientists use to classify animals and such? Or is that new? No, awesome, great. Well, we are gonna go right over it. Thank you, Sam. We are gonna go over it. Awesome, John hasn't seen it either. Well, we are gonna go over that and we are going to take a look right now. So I'm gonna start by sharing my whiteboard. Um, and does anyone want to remind us what an invertebrate is? Yes, can I remind? Sure. Uh, an inver invertebrate is a thing with no vertebrae. <laughs> right, and a vertebrae is? Um, Right, so an animal, a thing um, with no backbone. I'm gonna ask that you guys um, do not draw on my whiteboard um, because I'm gonna be putting notes up there and I don't want uh, you guys to be distracted from my notes. So we are just gonna jump right into it. Like I said, invertebrates um, don't have backbones and they actually make up 95% of all animals. Isn't that wild? So 95% of all animals are invertebrates. I'm gonna put that right up in our corner so we remember that. That is um, the first fun fact we are starting with. And we are gonna go right into the classification levels, right? So classification levels of animals. Um, let me see what I've got like this so you can see the top of my head. And I guess we're starting with purple today. So the first one, if you've ever heard of the animal kingdom, Yes, no, is that familiar? Yes. Yeah, right, so Animal Kingdom is the kingdom Animalia, right? Can we see where there's a similar Animal Kingdom, Animalia, right? Um, obviously the root word animal is there. So we are gonna be talking about the Animal Kingdom today. Now, that's the first layer. Now there are seven levels of classification, seven. Um, very excited you can see all my exclamation points today. So the first one is a uh, kingdom, which is Animalia. Now, the second layer is gonna be the phylum. Um, and actually, all vertebrates are in the phylum uh, chordata. Uh, phylum chordata. Um, there are some um, invertebrates in that phylum, but all of the vertebrates are going to be in the phylum chordata. Um, and then the other uh, 30 phyla are all invertebrates. So those are the ones we're going to be talking about today. Um, uh, all right, let's make sure that we are using our chat for school things only. Um, I'm gonna do this, there we go. So, um, there we go. So we got the phylum, vertebrates are in chordata, the other 30 phyla are all in vertebrates. So basically we're looking at very broad and it gets more specific, more specific, more specific, all the way down to the species. So that is the second one. Then, and as we go down, I'm gonna give you um, examples of how the phylum splits into smaller categories. And the examples are gonna be of vertebrates, but this week, after we get through this classification example, then we're gonna get onto the invertebrates. But just to illustrate for you the classification levels, 
Um, I'm going to give you vertebrates as an example, but that doesn't mean that's what we're going to continue focusing on. It is just um, for my example. So the phylum, there we go. So after the phylum, we get into the class, just like you are in class. Um, animals also uh, have a class, right? Class, classification, we see where that comes from. Um, and so each phylum is divided into smaller groups that are called classes. So um, Chordata has classes like Mammalia, which is mammals, right? Um, what else do we have? We've got, actually, I'm not going to put all the scientific names because that's um, a lot to type. Um, and that's not relevant information since we're not even talking about vertebrates this week. So we got mammals, we've got bony fish, we got um, fish with cartilage, we got a uh, reptiles, amphibian, birds, um, and that sort. So Chordata splits into all these different um, classes, right? So Chordata splits into all these different classes, um, and that's going to be the next level down. So we're still very broad when we're talking about mammals, birds, amphibians, right? Still very broad. So many animals in those. But as we go down, after class, we go to the order. So the order gets a little more specific, right? Each level we see a pattern uh, is getting much more specific as we go down. So uh, mammalia, right? Mammals. Mammals are split into um, smaller groups. Again, um, they're called the order. We got carnivora, which I'm sure we can guess what that is, hopefully. Uh, primates. Um, Rodentia, hopefully we can guess what that is too, an artiodact, uh, what is it, artiodactyl, dactylia, there we go, I always make sure I spell it right. Now, artiodactyl, that's um, not a dinosaur, it is actually the, um, the even-toed um, animals like uh, cow, moose, goat, sheep, all those lovely, a lot of barnyard animals um, with those hooves those are going to be the artiodactyla. And so mammals are split into these smaller categories, right? So as you can see, we continue splitting, going smaller and smaller. After the order, there's gonna be a family, and the families um, are based on specific characteristics, just like they all are, but it gets, you know, it gets a little more narrow, a little more specific. So carnivora splits into uh, cats, dogs, bears, uh, what's the other one? Weasels and others. Right, so those are the ones that carnivora splits into. Um, as you can see, we went animalia, chordata, mammalia, carnivora. Um, and then if we keep going into cats, we will see the genus, which is the sixth level of classification. And the genus um, is split from each family, obviously the genus, right? So it is animals that are closely related to each other. So you get very specific groups, just like um, the cat family splits into small domestic cats, right? So more like um, several lynx ocelot and like cats that are gonna be your pets. Um, tiger, <coughs> leopard, oops, supposed to be slash leopard, uh, jaguar, and the last one, uh, lions. And then, um, what is it? It's the panther and the cougar. So, um, right, so the cat splits into three different categories here that are called genus. And then the very last one, whoops, I'm gonna have to move this up a little, um, is going to be the species. The species is very specific, right? So like Bengal tiger, right? That's a species, right? There's only one very specific characteristics. Um, and so that's gonna have its own very scientific name. So each animal has a common name and a scientific name. And um, the scientific name actually is, oh, whoops, well, okay, that works. Um, scientific name is made up of the genus and then the species name. So we're gonna get into a scientific name later and you're gonna see the first one's gonna be the genus and the next one is going to be the species. We'll make that. Hey, once again. Hmm? What was that? Someone have a question? I don't know what that was. Okay. Well, let's make sure that we stay on mute unless you have a question. I was going to ask your financials. Okay. 
thank you, thank you. We're going to stay on mute unless we have a question. And if we are doing irrelevant things, then um, right, maybe I'll remove you from the class because I can do that. So please make sure we're staying on task. Um, this is not the time to go around with our friends. This is the time to make sure we are taking notes because I will be checking your notes at the end of the class. Like I said, please don't draw on my whiteboard because I'm putting important notes up there. So we're talking about the species. Now the species is going to be in Latin. Whoops, that's not where I meant to type. Uh, hello, in Latin, so that it can be universally understood because uh, Latin may be a dead language. No one natively speaks it anymore, but a lot of people learn it and it really is helpful in a lot of um, scholarly studies, right? Learning languages, um, science, a lot of things are in Latin as well. So that makes it pretty nice to learn about that. Um, and so yeah, the species is gonna be like the ocelot, right? Something very specific. Ocelot is a species of the, actually, let's see, mm, right? Tigers are, a, well, well, they don't have to be Bengal tigers, right? Because <laughs> that's different than Siberian tigers. Bengal tigers are a species, Roman, thank you, are a species um, uh, in the tiger, leopard, lion, jaguar category, right? Genus, there we go, right? So there's our example. I know you can't really see that, um, so I will get rid of this. So that you can see all of my notes. Can everyone see all the way down my notes? Hopefully. Okay, awesome. So there's that. We're gonna move this guy. Hopefully you guys can still see. But that is the beginning um, of our class. That is all of the classification levels. There are seven. Um, all of these sort of examples I gave, um, you don't necessarily have to have those written down. I just want you to understand how these things get split up into more specific sort of areas. So, um, thank you for that. Um, and I am going to request that you guys take notes during this. Um, I'll be checking them at the end. Uh, some of your classmates and other grades have requested that you can turn in notes on Google Classroom. I will take them by email at the end of the class. If you're taking them by hand, you can hold them up for the camera. Um, but I just want to make sure that you guys are taking good notes so that you are able, hold up at the end, honey, Sam, at the end of the class, I'm going to ask that you show me your notes. Thank you. Um, Yes, and also, um, if you guys are on your Google Classroom, um, I have uploaded the homework for the week um, under science, because that's what I do. I do science for you guys, and so my homework is up there. It is due Sunday evening. You have all week to do it. Um, I'm going to recommend that you don't, I mean, you can try and do it today, but you will not have all of the information you need until we have finished uh, lecturing for the week. So you can start it today, but uh, you're not going to have all the information you need until uh, the end of the week. Yes, Sam? Uh, we have homework. Yes, I'm going to ask that you guys um, fill stuff out. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to email me um, okay. or message me, um, and I am happy to help you out with that question. Yes. 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 Wait, where do we find our homework? The homework is going to be in the Google Classroom. Um, I will get the code for you guys, and I can put it in the chat. Let me see. Here we go. Oh, wait. Sorry. Hold on. Can you say that one more time my screen just, like, I yes. Don't know what happened. Um, I will put the note um, in the or the code. There you go. So the code is to everyone. Um, you guys should be able to see um, the code. And if you go to Google Classrooms and you log in with your email, your parents' email, um, you will be able to join the right eighth and ninth grade Google Classroom. Uh, and there will be a plus sign. You click plus. You click uh, join class. You copy and paste in that code or you type it in and then you are able to join it. One of my fifth graders informed me there's also an app for Google Classrooms. Uh, so that's another way that you can access all of the information and that's where all of your teachers will be putting assignments, uh, announcements, notifications, updates on things. If you need any files or um, handouts, notes for class, that's where those are going to be found. Um, so you're going to want to be checking that. You can also write notes to your teachers if you have any questions um, and we are all able to see that and help you guys out which is super cool. And it's a way for us to just sort of keep all of your assignments, all your information in one place. Um, and that makes it really easy for us to, you can turn stuff in there too. It's a really awesome um, platform that we are definitely making use of. I also wanted to let you guys know that this afternoon at 2 p.m. after your regular classes end, um, there will be a special um, like uh, writing class. Um, 
how to write an awesome essay, basically. Um, and it is going to be a high school level class, but you eighth graders are, of course, invited to participate. Um, I think it would be awesome if you guys went. Um, but that stuff should be on the Google Classroom as well. If you have any questions about that, feel free to message Wait, me, email me. What's happening? Uh, we're having an extra class today from two to three. Oh. Uh, it is an awesome high school how to write an awesome I thought it was like class. something. Okay. Yeah, they can hear you. It is something, yes. Um, yeah, I, I know it's something, but I thought it was like not class. I thought it was like something, I don't know. I uh, it, it is another class. Um, and it's after your regular classes, so you can still attend those. Um, I believe Ms. Southers is going to be teaching it. Um, so you guys will be able to hang out with her and learn some cool stuff from her um, that is specifically targeted on a higher level to be challenging for you. So I have another question. Uh, yeah. That jumble of letters and numbers in the thing, is that the password to Google Classroom? That's the code for the Google Classroom, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, awesome. So now that we've got that business sorted out, um, just as a reminder, this class will end at 1 p.m. And then your last class, or your fourth class will start at 1.15. And then if you are wanting to join the last class, it will start at 2 p.m. So, uh, no, it's not mandatory. Um, it's just an awesome new thing we're adding for you guys. Um, so you are able to, um, you know, get a little more out of our uh, classes. So. Wait, what class is it? What is it? What it's, is it? It's basically, it's another writing class, but it's like how to write an awesome sort of like high school level essay. It's really like a leveled up sort of, uh, a little more challenging oh. course for you guys. I have a question. Yeah, okay. Oh wait, hold on. This is actually for Samuel. Hold on, wait, Samuel, can you write this down? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. We're in class, not now. Um, so we are going back to our notes. Um, and like I said, we've got our classification levels and 95% um, of animals are invertebrates. We know our scientific name is the genus and the species. And now we are actually going to be able to get into our awesome, um, whoop, there's green, uh, phyla, right? So we're gonna start learning about our really cool phyla, our lovely invertebrates. And I'm going to start with blue letters. So the first one we are going to be learning about is called porifera. Porifera, right? And that is a phylum, right? I'll put phylum so we know what it is. It is a phylum, which means that there are going to be, uh, there's gonna be classes and orders, family, genus, species, right, all in that. But we are just gonna be talking about the, gen not generic, but the larger phyla. Um, the phylum, and we will be going into the categories of them, the characteristics, um, how many species they are, and that sort of lovely information. I'll be showing you guys some pictures as well, and I am excited about that. So, Perifera has 5,500 species um, that are encompassed in it, which seems like a lot, and it is. Uh, it is not the least, nor is it the most amount of species we'll be covering this week, but it is 5,000 500 species that are in the phylum periphera. And periphera might seem like kind of a, right? You're like, oh, periphera, it kind of sounds like peripheral, I don't know. They are informally, you might know them better, this bike can spell, informally known as sponges. Have you ever heard of a sea sponge, right? Um, I know SpongeBob. Yeah, SpongeBob, right? Um, That is periphera. So, um, yeah, we got periphera, they are informally known as sponges. They are multicellular, which means what? what is they multi have multiple more than one cells. cells. Mm -hmm. More than one cell, right? It's pretty Get simple. That. Very so, good. Thank you, guys. Okay. I love your participation. I appreciate it. Uh, multicellular organisms. They have, have pores and channels in their bodies that allow water to go through them. That is the main thing about sponges. Um, they have pores, right? Just like regular sponge, right? Pores, holes, channels that allow the water to go through them. Um, and in that way, uh, they are able to feed as well. They are called suspension feeders. Um, suspension feeders because they trap particles in the pores, channels of their body, and that's how they eat which is super neat. I'm gonna do this, I think, maybe. So that is suspension feeders. That is the pretty neat. They are one of the oldest animal groups. 
one of the oldest animal groups out there, which is pretty cool, pretty simple animals. Um, there's a lot of different kinds. And um, in a bit, I'm gonna be showing you guys some photos, some examples of the kinds that we are talking about. So that is Porifera. And I am going to take my green and I'm gonna do a little box around this so we know what we're looking at so we can keep our notes real. We separate and neat. So there we go, that's Perifera. And watch what I'm gonna do, watch this. Bam, whoops. And I've been working on the whiteboard. My whiteboard skills are improving slowly but surely every class. And I can highlight now, which is awesome. Well, I'm gonna highlight all my uh, classification levels too while you guys take your notes. And then once you're good, you can give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so I will know that I can move on to our next phylum. Awesome, Roman's good. Looks like Sam is still taking notes. If you want to give me the little virtual thumbs up, that's fine too. Dylan's good. Hudson, awesome. Thank you. Avery's good. Good. Thank you. Um, and then if your username is not your first name, would you please be able to change it to your first name? I would really appreciate that. Um, it really makes it a lot easier for me. Um, I don't have to you know, um, take my time and, you know, double check. So if your username is not your first name or your first name is not in your username, I would really appreciate it if you could change that. Thank you, Sam. Um, so that we are able to all know who we're talking to. Awesome. So the next one we are going to be looking at is called, we'll do a different color. We'll do pink. Oops, that's not pink. Pink. There we go. We are going to talk about Placozoa, which is our next type of lovely invertebrate. Placozoa, pink placozoa, nice alliteration. I really love alliterations, you guys, so if you ever have any good alliterations to share, um, I'm all ears. So, placozoa, anyone want to guess how many, whoops, I just typed it, there's no guessing. There's only one species of it! It's only one, it's not 5,000, I know, Sam, there's only one, right? It's wild. Some of them are going to have thousands and some are just going to have one. Um, and so basically this guy, uh, the Plagozoa, consists of a single, whoops, not single, single by layer of a few thousand cells. So as you will see in my photo of it, um, it's a pretty simple guy, you know. Um, he's not super exciting. He's just sort of a flat layer of cells he's living right obviously he's a living organism he is one type yeah, I, have a, he is very I have a question yeah uh is plaza zoa the phylum yes oh. all yes yeah yeah okay I will, sorry i forgot to do the phylum thank you phylum there we go now we know what we're looking at that's the phylum awesome so all my little headings are going to be the phylum i've got many many of them to go over with you um i hope i will be able to get through them all this week um I think I will be able to. We will take it day by day, by day by day. So, single bilayer, few thousand cells, and the scientific name, like I said, we were going to look at the scientific name of a few things, is called Trichoplex adherens. That is the scientific name of the one species of Plagozoa. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And the way um, they're actually another sort of old animal group. It's not yet known how they're related to the other early diverging animal groups, uh, but the way they reproduce, there's actually two ways they can reproduce. They reproduce by dividing, whoops, I can type, dividing into two indiv individual, <laughs> uh, or by budding off many multi cellular individuals there we go i did it so um that is basically there's two different ways to reproduce pretty simple um asexual obviously um because it's just cells dividing basically um and that is pretty neat so they reproduce pretty simply uh and they are only one type and they are called plexoa that's the phylum and that's pretty much all there is to it to the placozoa. And then I'm going to go over one more type and then we'll do some that photos. A Game Boy? I'm sorry? I, I saw something on Roman's screen. 
It was like something uh, below him. Okay, well, we're going to work on focusing on It's not a Game Boy. Okay, well, it should be science, so let's make sure we're focusing on science. It is science, don't worry. Okay, so Pogzoa, um, I'm going to move my notes a little bit up so that I can fit a little more, and I can draw my little line right here. We're going to go green, bam, just like that. Not a completely straight line, but it is right as close as I can get freehand right now. So... The third type is going to be mm, orange. How about that? We're going to do orange. So the third type is called, anyone want to take a shot at how to pronounce this? Can what do I think, Roman? Uh, stenophora. Canophora. Oh, can, wait, what? Canophora. Can, canophora? Canophora. The C is silent. Bro, come on, bro. Sneaky Tenof C, right? Sneaky C. Just like pterodactyl, tenophora, yeah, right? The P is silent, yeah, the C is silent. Ter pterodactyl. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So, tenophora is the phylum, and there are a hundred species in this phylum. And they are called comb jellies. Ooh, cool. Mm -hmm. They are cool. I'll show you a photo. They're really cool when you look at them. So, comb jellies make up most. Uh, of the oceans, plankton. They are really small. Plankton. Make up most of the oceans. Plankton. They are pretty awesome because they actually have eight little combs, right? That's what they call them. Are they uh, going to steal the cones. Krabby Patty secret formula? Bro, they better not be touching the Krabby Patty secret formula. Uh, plankton. Better not. I'm going to have to make it so you guys can't unmute yourself, can you? Because <laughs> I can do that and I'll do it if you cannot um, focus, please. So, Make up most of the ocean's plankton, not the cartoon plankton that you are thinking of, but the real plankton, the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, uh, with that lovely bioluminescence, which I highly recommend if you have a chance to go snorkeling. Bioluminescence is really cool. Side note, from comb jellies, they are actually called comb jellies because they have eight little, um, what they call combs, which are little um, protrusions like cilia, um, and they are what propel the comb jellies to the water. So that's how they move, right? They kind of push with the combs. And then, when a small animal comes into contact with the comb jellies, these special cells burst open and they cover the prey with sticky threads and that's how they catch them. So it's very surprising for the little animals. Um, let me see. So when small animals uh, come into contact with the jellies, um, special cells pop open and cover prey with sticky threads. And that is how they are caught. And I will do that so you can see a little better. Right, sticky threads, very exciting. Um, and that is the Tenophora phylum, right? Very cool, Tenophora. Some of these have silent letters. Some of these have interesting pronunciations. Um, so, Thank you for bearing with me and being patient and learning um, learning from me as well. So I'm going to do my little highlight situation. Just highlight my phylums for you guys because I want to make my notes as clear and concise um, and colorful as possible, as you can see, because I love colors, especially purple. So there we go. We're all highlighted. Awesome. So I'll give you guys a minute to um, take those notes while I continue to talk about um, invertebrates. So we know a lot of common invertebrates, right? Um, but hopefully this week we're going to be learning about some not so common ones and also a little more about the ones that we already know. You probably have some invertebrates in your backyard if you have a backyard or right outside where you live. There's probably some in the dirt, in the grass, wherever you are. Um, there's definitely some nearby. Uh, we're going to learn about some parasites, which are cool. Um, we are going to learn about some worms, mollusks, uh, lots of little snakes and worms and type of stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Arthropods, um, which actually we have a separate section on, so I won't go too much into that, but uh, we will do a very short overview. And then when that week comes for us to focus on arthropods, we will do a very deep overview so that we are able to fully understand all of the lovely arthropody things about arthropods.
Yeah. Yay, arthropods. Yay, arthropods. Um, but this week it's the invertebrates in general, right? Not arthropods. But I think arthropods are really cool, um, and I'm very excited to talk about them in a little bit. But invertebrates are also very cool. Um, if you guys like snails, or if you like uh, what else? Worms or parasites. Like Gary the snail. Jellyfish. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, circle. jellyfish, snails, octopus. <laughs> um, what else? Squids. Those are all actually in the same mollusk uh, category, the same phylum. Um, all those things I just mentioned, which are cool. Um, and then, uh, oh wait, jellyfish aren't, sorry. Jellyfish are um, something separate. <laughs> they are in the same category as coral and anemones and hydra, actually. And we're going to go over that hopefully in the future today. How many other notes? Does anyone need more time to take down my blue, pink, and orange notes? You need more time. Um, yes. Okay, I'll give you guys a little more time. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Um, I'm actually going to uh, take us away from the notes, but I will take us right back. You will get these notes again. I just want to show you those photos so I can move on on the left side, okay? So I will take you back to the notes. Um, but I'm going to show you something else real quick, and then we will go back to those notes. So I'm going to take you to my lovely picture file. So here we have a lovely uh, porphyr. Right? That's, That's a sponge. pretty nice. It is, right? It's a nice icon. Very cool. And as we keep going down, as you can see, it looks a little, um, oh, if it would load, let's see, maybe it'll work. As you can see, it looks a little, uh, oh, it's still not working, spongy. Um, and as we keep going, here's another one. This is the spongilla. Yes, that's the real name. Um, and it is so also cool. a sponge, as you can see. It is immobile, um, right, underwater. Like we said, this is actually the freshwater sponge. So this is freshwater that it's in. Um, right, porous, obviously, they've got those pores, those channels where the water can go through. I'm trying to keep scrolling. This is the euspongia, uh, another type of sponge, commonly known as bat sponge. Um, here's just the third type of sponge. And as we keep going, Does here's it usually sponge. have the watermark? No, it, it doesn't. Um, oh, it was just okay. hard to find a it was hard to find a good quality photo um, that did not have a watermark, so I apologize about that. Here is a placozoa. Very cool, right? Just like I said, single layer of multi cell organism. Um, pretty simple, pretty cool. Here is a lovely tenophora. These are our comb jellies, right? Very pretty, aren't they? I think jellyfish are really cool looking. So here's our tenophora. And those are the three that we have gone over so far. So I will take us back to our whiteboard now. We can go back to those notes if you are still taking those notes. Uh, awesome, very good. And if you are not, I will get rid of my little mammalian notes over here. Whoops. And I will, whoop, there we go. Because uh, hopefully you guys have all those down. We'll erase all these highlights and we'll get rid of that. And hopefully you have that 95% of the animals are invertebrates. I'm gonna get rid of that tiny dot. And we are going to keep pushing forward with the next kind. We did Tenofer. So we are now on to, uh, this is the phylum. Anyone want to give this one a try? I'll do it. I will. I will do it. All right, go I'll, ahead, Sam. I'll do it, okay. Sam, you're yelling. Cinderella. <laughs> no, wait, uh, that was a good try. Very good, yes, right? Is. Um. So, yeah. So this one is actually called, uh, the sea is silent. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah, it's called uh, Nidaria. All right. Yeah, um, here, I'll type it out for you guys. Why are the uh, seas silent like every time? Um, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't quite have a good answer for you just because they are, I guess. Um, I are the seas it. silent and thick? Uh, no, that's the CK, and it's not silent because the CK together makes the k sound. Yeah, come on, dude. All right. I'm sorry, I'm just trying yeah. to learn. All right. Um, and this is, I mean, this is science, so if you have more science -y questions. Um, I mean, I'm happy to answer any of your English questions because I love grammar, but um, here I am teaching you science. So, Nidaria, right? There we go. We've got that lovely pronunciation guide for you guys. And also myself, so I do not forget... There are 10,000 species of Nidaria. I know, it keeps getting bigger, right, you guys? It's wild. So there's 10,000 species, and these ones actually include corals, jellies, and hydra. Also jellyfish. Jellyfish, yes. All other jellyfish are uh, actually... Finally. 
Now, when I say Hydra, um, I don't know what first comes to your mind, but I'm not talking America. about a three-headed monster, and I'm not talking about a secret organization in any oh, big, dang, big, so big movie. But uh, what I am talking about, oh, that says Hydra, not Hydra. Um, what I am talking about, Hydra, are actually small organisms, uh, small freshwater organisms that like temperate and tropical regions. So they're just really small little organisms. Uh, so they're, they're cool, you know, they're little organisms. Um, and they are existing um, in the category of Nidaria. So um, anem mm. anemones are actually, um, they're in Nidaria too, and so I'll show you a photo of those when I show you our photos of our next section. Um, and these guys actually, the defining factor about them, um, so they actually have a single opening that serves dual purposes. So like we have a mouth, that takes food in, and we have, um, right, obviously a waste management end, right, our anus. Um, we are, we have two different ends, right, that perform two different functions. However, the Nidaria have one um, opening that serves both purposes. So it serves to take uh, materials in and it serves to get rid of waste as well. So they have a single opening that serves both purposes, and that is one of the defining things about the Nidaria. So corals, jellies, hydra, anemones, um, those are all in the same category, the same phylum, uh, and that is pretty much all I have on Nidaria for you guys today. That is Nidaria, and I'm actually going to change the color to my light blue. See that, and then I will draw my lovely line with the green, so that we can. Wait, I have a question. Yes. Or actually, I can't see my screen anymore. It's black. Oh. That. Can Open you see the me? window. Open it up. I can see all of you. Can you not just see the whiteboard? Black. Yeah, me, I just can't see the whiteboard. Oh, let me oh, try okay. to get... Now I can't see the whiteboard. Okay, yeah, that's because I stopped sharing it. Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay, then. I guess that's normal. Can you see it again, Roman? Did that work? Uh, it's not loading. What is that? Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me try something. Keep me posted. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one and then keep me posted. Okay, keep listening for now. All right. All right it's thanks. working again. It's working again. That's great news. Thank you. Thumbs awesome. Up. So uh, I'm going to pause this for a second, take us to look at some pictures of Nidaria. I will take us back to the notes. So if you are not done with the notes, do not worry. We will be right back here. So let us look at my lovely picture file right here. That is our right comb jelly. And now we're on to the Nidaria. So here is our picture of the lovely Hydra, right? Very small little guy. Very cute. Um, and he lives in fresh water. Here's our jelly, also Nidaria. Here is our lovely, beautiful, big coral forest, um, also Nidaria, and our nice little sweet Super anemone, cool. which is also Nidaria. Ooh, Finding Nemo. So very colorful, yeah, very diverse. Bro, Finding Nemo. Nemo lives in a Nidarian, right? That's my favorite so, anime. So we are going to go back to bloop, bloop, um, the whiteboard, right? Let's see. All right, we are back so we can continue taking our notes on Nidaria. And we are going to move on to our very next, oh, look at the time. Um, I'm actually not gonna do another one today because I don't know if I'll have time to finish it. Um, oh, is, it is that okay if I can um, tell a fellow classmate something then if class is ending? No. No, 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 I'm, I'm not gonna have time to go over another one. But oh, I'm gonna okay. continue talking for the next okay. six minutes. <laughs> yes. So. Um, like I said, so today we went over the seven layer classification system. Uh, we went over um, four different types of uh, lovely phyla, right? Four different phyla, um, which is phylum, right? The plural of phylum. And we learned about the differences, how many species, um, sort of what characterizes them, uh, what is the most specific thing about them, what sort of organisms are included in them. Um, and we looked at some pictures of them so we could get a visual as well because sometimes when you're talking about invertebrates, microscopic things, really big words. Sam, please. Really big words. Roman. Okay. When you're talking about really big words, um, it's sometimes hard to get a visual. So it's nice when we have the option to um, see cool pictures and stuff, right? And so I also want to remind you that if you are not on the Google Classroom, uh, I would please like you guys to do so. Um, I would also like to remind you guys that I have put up some work for you guys to do this week. I will give you all the information you need to do it as long as you are taking diligent notes in my class. 
And um, uh, I would also like to, if you are taking it, good, Sam's got his notes. And I have one or two more fun facts to share with you guys after I check your notes. I see Sam's Can you notes. see it? Can you see it? Yeah, um, it's kind of hard with the background, but I can see different oh. pieces. I got Austin's, thank you. Um, anyone else have any notes to, oh, I see Hudson and Avery. Thank you very much. I like Avery's lovely colorful notes. Um, Do you like my notes? Uh, who asked me that? Is that Sam? Yeah, that was me. But yeah, I your notes are nice. Those are some uh, Roman, do you have notes. any notes to show me? Anyone else? Yeah, I showed notes? them. Here's some of my notes. I just wrote down a few. Oh, that's okay. some of them. I have more. Okay. As long as you've written down everything I've been showing you. Um, anyone who hasn't shown me notes, have notes for me. Um, Ivan, John, Dylan, Alan, any of you guys, if you would like. Um, awesome, Dylan. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's nice, um, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, if you do not show your notes to the camera right now, um, I will put my email in the chat so you guys can send it to me on my email. I'm also gonna make it available for you guys to submit it to the Google Classroom if you're on there. Uh, to submit it to the Google Classroom. Did I spell it right? I think I did. Um, so that is my email. You are free to send it to my email. Um, uh, Ivan, can you take a picture of it and email it to me? Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you're totally welcome to take a picture of it. If it's on the computer, um, you can upload it. Um, let me see. I wonder if I could find, um, I think the link to the 2 p.m. class with Mrs. Southard should be on your guys' Google Classroom. Is everyone on the Google Classroom? Is there anyone who is not? The way I'm getting to class is that the, the, yeah, it's Zoom. the I'm well yeah, but there's a calendar yeah, that has everything and I just Austin. do that. There yeah. is a calendar, Sam. Thanks yeah. for mentioning yeah. that. We have I, made I a Google that. calendar just for you guys. I better class through Zoom, has, no way. That has Bro, all Sam. of Okay, hold on. We have made a calendar for you guys that has all of the classes, all of the times, what you need to know, it's all on there, which is super exciting because it's nice that it's all one place for you guys. So if you guys check the calendar uh, this afternoon, there should be a link to that lovely 2 p.m. high school essay writing class with Mrs. Southerns, uh, who's super excited to teach you guys. Um, and I am, let me see, I think I have one more thing for you guys. I want to know if anyone has a favorite invertebrate. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it to my boy, uh, Gary the snail. All right, Sam, <laughs> yeah. Sam likes snails. Roman, what's yours? Pigeons. Invertebrates. Verte they're vertebrates. Yeah, pigeon. They're not vertebrates. Invertebrates. Anything that moves its neck like that cannot have a vertebrae. Okay, have you <laughs> seen the way that they walk? No, that's not how it works. I don't <laughs> There's no okay. way. Roman, they have I want a you to think about a favorite invertebrate. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, probably Gary. Oh no, 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 SpongeBob. Sponges, right? Awesome. Good. We learned about sponges today. We That's will learn about one. snails another one. day. Dylan, do you have a favorite invertebrate? The leader of Gary the snail. Sea stars. No. Which one? Sea stars. That sea is so stars. Epic. Yeah, those are cool. Awesome. I will try and get to those as well. Sea stars. Avery, do you have a favorite invertebrate? What are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking. Hold on. All right. Keep thinking. Awesome. Awesome. Good, good, good. Anyone else? I personally um, think ladybugs are cool. Um, <laughs> right? I think they're really cool. What else? There's lots of cool uh, bugs and stuff. Jellyfish. Ivan likes jellyfish. I think those are very nice to look at. Um, to stay That's far away from, but to look at. One. Bro, right, Nemo's say? house is my favorite. <laughs> Nemo's favorite? house. Nemo's house. Oh, Nemo's the anemones. House anemone. Yes. Yeah, we talked oh, yeah. about anemones today, too. Awesome. Thank it's you, guys. They okay. sting. It's true. Right. You got to be careful, right? But. As long as we're careful, we're good. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I look forward to getting your notes. Those of you who did not show them to me. Yes, Roman? Uh, is that okay? Okay, so now since it's the end of class, now can I say something to a fellow classmate? What? No, honey, I no, got it in the meeting. No, no. Wait, I, that oh. answer is no. I'm not doing it. Yeah, Bro. the answer is no, Roman. This is not a social hour.